Hello YouTube, Fuzzfinger back with you once again today and welcome back to our let's play of Final Fantasy XII The Zodiac Age. And today we're going to continue through our ascent up Pharos. So stay tuned for the show and if you enjoy watching, please don't forget to support me by hitting the like button and staying subscribed to the Fuzzfinger Gaming YouTube channel. I know it's been a while since we've done any of the actual story walkthrough for the game and the reason why I'm only doing it now is because a lot of the hunts and that that we've got left to do are actually locked behind the story itself so we do need to actually get some of this done before we can proceed any further at this point. Right then, so let's go ahead now and actually uh, head towards our next boss fight. We're going to make our way down south here and to be honest this is going to be a complete cakewalk for us with this particular playthrough because we're in our late 60s now and the boss is I think in his 40s so if you haven't done any of the optional content though don't worry I'm still going to tell you the tactics you're going to want to use in order to take this guy out uh, when we're fighting him so we need to actually enter the next area and I knew it was either this entrance so this part of the uh, exit or the next part so we need to continue heading up this ascent is obviously taking us particularly to a high level. So we'll go to the ancient door here. And the boss is just up ahead. So I did actually pop here in one of my optional videos. I think when we, when we was preparing to take on Zodiac. So if you haven't been here already. Just up here there's going to be a couple of chests. They're one time loot chests. So you'll want to grab them. One of them contains a black mask. And they're either just around here, or actually just in this section here, either side of this door. So that's the reason why they're not there for me. But if you're just following my walkthrough for the story and are not bothering with the optional content, then you probably haven't seen them yet, and that's what you'll want to pick up. Right, so when you're ready, we're going to head through the ancient door. And this is going to go and hopefully kick off our next encounter. Well, we're in a very strange area, at the least. And we can't go too far. So this is Sleet, and Sleet is... Um, a level 47 fiend. He's not particularly difficult, but he does start with regen. So make sure you begin by dispelling him. And you probably want to steal from him. He's got the ends of scale, the Pisces gem, or the ends of fin. So grab any of those. And then I'm just going to turn off my gambits for steel now that we've got that. And once we do so, I don't expect him to last long. But if you're going to struggle with this guy because you're still low level for whatever reason, then what I recommend is hitting him with oil. And then having a black mage cast Firegar on him. Of course, if you've got Scaith, then even better. But all your Firegar is a great tactic to take this guy on. So just bear that in mind. If it's your best option, it's probably going to take the boss down fairly quickly. Anyhow. But even so, his 92,000 health is not going to last long against my party. I'm even going to go and give the Genji glove to Varn here. So we can get those nice combos in. And I haven't got any buffs or anything on my party. No debuffs on the enemy. We're just going all out here. And Silt. Or Slit, sorry. Is going to fall very quickly as you can tell. But again, just make sure you dispel that regen. As and when it is cast on the boss. And down he goes. And we go through our victory walkthrough once more. For another boss defeat. And now we're going to move into the next area of the Pharos for the first time as well. So let's just spam our buttons to get through this here.
Okay. At which point we are, of course, put through or put back to the previous area. And we can just head for the door on the other side. And then follow the path round to the exit. And there's another waystone for us. I don't believe there's any treasure here that you'll want to take apart from the treasure that I told you about before the boss. But I will just run around here and see if there's any chests. But no, there isn't. There is some nice treasures coming up in this place. But not just yet. So I'll point those out to you as and when we come across them. We'll go ahead and use the waystone. Oh, there were some treasures there then. What was that about? They weren't there a moment ago. But anyway, here's the second ascent. Reach of Diamond Law. And before we do anything, I'm just going to head back and see if we can grab those treasures that we just missed. Oh, we can't at the moment. Unless we read the inscription first. Yeah, now we can. Now, where were those treasure chests hiding out? They were, like, hidden or something, weren't they, around here? Oh, no, we're back at the start now. That's no good for us. I guess we'd have to make our way all the way back then, wouldn't we, to find those treasure chests? Okay, well, let's just move on. Okay, painful lesson to learn there. Don't use this waystone. Uh, so, I use this waystone, but don't use the next one, because... Uh, Let's just say that I had to traverse all the way back again. Right then, so. I'm going to loot these treasures this time. See what I had to uh, replay this blooming level for. Two X potions. How marvellous. Okay. Let's use the waystone and head to floor two. Sorry, ascent two. The second ascent, or whatever it is you want to call it. And there's going to be a few items around this place that you're going to need to know about. As in one-time spawn items. Nothing terribly exciting on the second ascent. But still a few bits that might make it worthwhile for you. And we're going to begin here on the area known as the Reach. The second ascent, the Reach. So first things we're going to want to do is go ahead and reach the save point that's on this particular level. Now there's no treasure chests. And... There are a few, uh, there is one mechanic that you need to know about. And that is that each of the exits on this level, there's four in total I believe, uh, disables a certain thing that your party finds useful. For example, you might not be able to use items if you choose one door, or magics, or weapons, or the minimap. And what gets disabled depends on what you choose. So we're going to disable the minimap, which means we're going to be going through the southeast exit. And the reason for that is we still get to use everything, and we still get to use our main map anyway. So in my opinion, that uh, out of all four things to disable, that is probably the easiest one to manage. So that's what we're going to be doing, but we're going to save here. Right, to be honest, guys, it's actually lunchtime for me now, so I need to go and get a sandwich and take a break from the game. Uh, but just in case you want to explore a little bit ahead, then you'll want to head, and you're going to follow along with me in the next episode, you'll want to head to this door here, which is the threshold of knowledge. Your minimap will be disabled by using it. Uh, but in my opinion, as I say, this is the best option. Uh, but thanks for joining me today, guys. I hope you've enjoyed watching. If you have, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button, and I'll see you soon for more Zodiac Age.